parties so we can legally meet here without breaking the open meeting law. And we'll start by asking, welcome Harlan, just in time. Yep. Yep. Um, asking for if anyone has any amendments to the agenda. Bruce. I'd like to talk about the sidewalk in front of Pierce Hall. Mm -hmm. You said Pierce Hall and I thought Park House. Yeah, the two. Nope. <laughs> nope. The other side of the street. Yeah. 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 I'd like to talk about the uh, the Belmont Trail and a uh, planning grant opportunity. Belmont Trail? Bel Belmont. B-E-L-O. What is this, Belmont? Belmont Trail. B-E-L-L-A-M-O-N-T? Yeah, he'll go into more detail probably. Grant plus Yep. B-E-L-O-M-O-N-T. And um, anyone else? Yep. And um, then since you probably, are you here to talk about the Belmont Trail also? Yeah, uh, yeah. So since you traveled the farthest, why don't we open with that so you guys can get on with your, your evening? Um, it, yeah, well, sure. Yeah. Because that works for everybody else in the end. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay. There you go. I'll take it right now. Right now. You're right. Right. You're 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 um, I don't know if you guys heard about the uh, Chittenden Brook uh, Integrated Resource Project uh, the Forest Service is doing, and uh, they, from our hut association, has to propose a uh, hut location up at Chittenden Brook. Um, it's still pending approval. It's going through the approval right now. Um, so the reason why I'm here to talk about um, what we call the Bellamont Trail, which is uh, essentially a point-to-point uh, -point, uh, mountain, mountain bike trail, uh, non-motorized, so multi-use as well, um, from Stowe to Killington is the, um, the goal, the phase one goal, if you will. Um, Vermont has generally a lot of really nice mountain biking opportunities, but uh, most communities are kind of centered around these little spaghetti bowl of trail networks, just kind of loops, 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 loops. Um, so there's a lack of going from this community to the next community to the next community connection. So uh, we've been talking about this for a couple of years now with our neighbors, um, Pittsfield, Killington, River Valley, Stowe. Um, the idea is every uh, Rasta, including Rochester Randolph Area Sports Trail Alliance, is a local Vermont Mountain Bike Association chapter here. Um, and the other ones I mentioned are also chapters of the Vermont Mountain Bike Association, Vimba for short. Um, so we've been talking to each other about the idea of connecting um, all of our networks. And the reasoning for that is, is um, it's very common out west where you can ride long distance from point to point. You know, same thing with a hiking trail, the long trail. You can ride, I mean, a hike from one end of Vermont to the other. Or ski, uh, the Catamount Trail, same thing. Um, or vast, the snowmobile, you can essentially ride all over the state. But there is something missing for mountain biking, and um, mountain biking is a growing sport, one of the fastest growing sports, um, and it's a great opportunity to um, provide something that's unique uh, to anywhere else in, in the Northeast, essentially. Um, so, some of, you know, the benefit for it would be is the, the local benefits, you know, the, the, the local residents can use these trails, um, but it's also a benefit that it could be an economic impact, um, get a couple extra folk coming into town to visit, um, to use this trail network. So um, it's a pretty ambitious project. Um, we've, we estimated about a little over 80 miles of new single track trail needs to be built in order to make the connection happen between Stowe and um, Killington. Um, so a lot of, a lot of money. Um, so one of the things that um, we have been discussing uh, with our partners, we've been meeting with the Forest Service as well as the state, um, couple of years now we've had some discussion um, so and one of the things that we're realizing is uh, you know the planning purposes um, we have you know some questions we want to have answers where should this trail go um, ideally most of it would go on public lands uh, for service and state would be prime examples um, but you know how do we 
pay for, how do we get, um, you know, the layout design and all that stuff. So um, the Vermont has a, uh, the Vermont Community uh, Program um, Planning Grant um, with the Vermont Development Community. Yeah, AG of, uh, uh, yeah, it's a community, effectively a uh, community develop, development planning grant. So they have a couple of different grant categories through which towns can apply uh, for, for funding. And one of those categories is a, a planning grant. Um, that would allow the towns to conduct a number of uh, studies. Um, this one in particular would likely be an economic impact study to see what um, what this trail network could do um, on the economic side for, for rural communities. Um, basically, we would, I think, go include Pittsfield through... Yeah, at this point we're thinking um, Rochester, uh, Hancock, and Granville. Um, we've been told that those are great candidates for this particular grant. It's the HC Commerce and Community Development, um, and I think in the past, I know Hancock applied for one for the, the school renovation, building renovation there, for the town office and stuff. Um, so we reached out to um, Two Rivers um, to see, you know, there's a lot of kind of upfront paperwork required, and we don't want to burden the town with it, anything. Um, they talked to Rita, and um, they are willing to um, help help see this through. Um, for the grant opportunity. So it's just a planning grant. It's not uh, a grant to build a trail. It's just to see, you know, what's possible, what's feasible, economic study, um, to see if this is what everybody wants, essentially, in this area. Um, but yeah, the, I'm gonna pass around some stuff um, to kind of give you guys an example of what if you haven't been up to the Rochester Ranger Station uh, last fall, we Rasta constructed a uh, two mile um, with new mountain bike trail network behind the Ranger Station. And the hope is to essentially connect that from there up to Chittenden Brook and over to Pittsfield so that you allow, essentially you can walk right here out of the village, the community can just go to the, go to the mountains on trails. Um, right now there's kind of a, you know, unless you're snowmobile and you can't really get to the trails, um, in a friendly way for mountain biking and hiking. Um, so that, that's kind of the underlying goal. And I'll, I'll pass around some examples of the pictures of the trail. Um, the trail is not like a typical hiking trail. It goes straight up and down. Everything is 10% uh, average. Um, so it kind of lots of switchback. So it's great for walking, uh, running. Um, even kids go on it, bike with their little bikes. Um, the reason for the kind of gradual stuff is more sustainable. Um, they're not dealing with erosion when you have a steep trail. So it's a lot of um, sustainable practice that we use to go into development of the trail. So I'll just pass this around and give you guys an example of the trail, trail track, what it would look like. Um, and a quick, uh, just shows you all the different chapters are involved that we're working with in partnership with Maha Association and Vermont Bike Association, all the chapters. Um, and I also brought this uh, chart. You guys may have heard of the uh, Brandy Gap uh, backcountry zone up in Brandy Gap um, that Ross has been working on with partnership with the Forest Service. Um, this is actually from two years ago. This is a chart that shows a um, one day, uh, on February 18, 2017, um, they based on trail counters that were up there installed. Um, 170 little, 171 visitors came to use that area, that backcountry zone in one day. And this is based on a model that the uh, developed by the National Park Service used to model the economic impact of national parks and other recreation assets in the country. They estimated that um, just shy of two hundred thousand dollars worth of economic impact funds um, came to the area. Um, so it kind of like it breaks it out, you know, restaurants and bars, you know, you know gear, lodging, transportation, groceries. Um, that just I just wanted to bring that to show you know this is something we're thinking that could be this is a great winter version the backcountry skiing but um, you know we need something you know we feel like we can do something for summer for mountain biking that's a great opportunity um, focus on that yeah that's a great example because what what that page does I think is kind of paint a little bit of a picture for what we'd be going for in terms of a, a study to, to see what, what we could gain out of this this trail. So not just for one day, but over probably like an annual period that they would look at. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and this is just kind of talks about the project, kind of end to end, and um, just kind of an overview. 
what it is um, we put together um, different um, so one thing I want to I'll let RJ speak to Warren about it but great we have a trail but how do you get from one end to the other end um, the idea is you go from hut to hut um, you want to explain a little more? <laughs> sure yeah yeah the Chinon Brook hut that Angus referenced is it's small it's a 10 person hut um, probably about the size of uh, square footage area of this room, roughly maybe a little smaller actually. Um, so the whole notion is, you know, the long trail, uh, if anyone has ever been on the long trail, there's a number of shelters and lean-tos uh, along the long trail and um, the Velamont Trail, you'll, you'll need a place to stay if you're gonna, you know, do a couple of days journey on this trail, whether you're hiking or, or mountain biking. Um, so the huts will help to link the trail together and the towns as well. So kind of imagine being able to stay um, in a hut one evening and then bike or, or hike or, or walk into into Rochester and, and grab a sandwich at Sandy's and then continue on your way uh, north or south into the next hut. So Bellamont, the idea is linking the communities with the forest, with the, you know, the wilderness. Um, so in the evening you can hang out in the huts um, day recreate and maybe in the afternoon you, you spend some time in towns and then head back up into the into the woods. Question. Yes. I know uh, like on the Appalachian Trail, Long Trail, typically huts and shelters are about a day's hike apart which typically runs about 10 miles. What are you thinking about as far as these kind of trails? Smaller? Yeah, yeah right about that between 10 and 15 miles okay. apart. Yeah, because you'll be on a bike so you can go a little, a little further, a little faster. So we yeah, may not have right, to go. Exactly. That's why I was asking. I yeah. don't know if you were going to expand that out or keep it about the same as a typical hiking trail yeah about 10 yeah miles. probably between miles. maybe a little higher uh closer to 15 closer um, 15 okay um between yeah because they won't just be servicing mountain bikers we're trying to locate so compromise it's going to be a compromise to serve all exactly yeah. we're trying to make them a year-round structure okay. so that backcountry skiers could also utilize these huts mm -hmm. as well yeah You'll be able to cover a lot more ground compared to a long trail on the, because you look at the trail tread. Sure. And it's not, you know, you're not going along the line <laughs> the whole way. You're going to be up in the mountains, but you come down in the valley, and then you go back up in the mountains. Is the, the mountains. idea to build actual uh, shel uh, shelters or actual huts? A hut, so an enclosed huts. structure, yeah. Enclosed so you structure. can sleep okay. in, in the winter as well. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. The, um, and most of these will be below 2,500 feet elevation, so they're not the management uh, fiasco at that point becomes much more challenging as you get higher and higher. Do you have any proposed trails or are you still in study stage of that? Actually, uh, it's a great question. Um, there's uh, trail connecting Rochester and Pittsfield that's working its way through the uh, Robinson IRP Integrated Resource Project. And Angus could talk a little bit about the distance of that trail and, and kind of the more specific. Yeah, so essentially that's been going through um, several common periods. You may have heard about it already in a couple, the, we had one of the Rochester School a couple last year. Um, but basically it's proposed would be the Rochester Ranger Station, um, there's a two mile trail network that got built last fall there. So you would hop across, um, going north on Route 100 or get across the bridge and by Martin Farm. Um, got landowner permission from the farm there, um, Kenneth as well. Uh, mostly on Forest Service land and then we come down the Bean Bridge, um, right, right after you cross Bean Bridge behind um, Crowley's farm there. And then it would head up uh, Bean uh, Bridge, the, you know, going up Tunnel Brook more or less towards that way. But it would cut off. Uh, you would utilize some existing Forest Service roads where it's, it's reasonable if it's not too steep. The where it gets too steep is where we do new trails up to Swans Mill, along the ridge on Swans Mill, utilize the existing Forest Service road. And then it would pop off down to uh, Bingo, um, and then up and over Bingo, um, kind of end up at the base of Chittenden Brook um, campground uh, entrance there. And then it would go use some of the existing road. Um, so we're, I mean, not 100% of it is gonna be a new trail. So we're trying to utilize some existing, but the goal is to have at least 70% of it to be um, new single track trail. Um, so, you know, that the experience you want is a kind of a narrow um, trail and not necessarily on a road. And then from Chittenden Brook is where the hut would be located um, and the backcountry zone. So it'd be a year round use up there. 
um, and then I go up and over essentially to Upper Michigan in Upper Michigan Road in Pittsfield. And then that's kind of like the first phase um, from there in the south and there north. Um, and that's where the planning grant would be helpful. It's like, where do we go from here in Rochester north to Red River Valley? So have you got this section here mapped out somewhere? From here north, we don't. Yeah, we're, we're still in the planning phases for that. We have like conceptually looking at, you know, a map, we can say like, roughly this corridor, you know, kind of blob style, like is where we would like to go, but we haven't, it's not nearly as specific as heading south toward, toward Pittsfield. Um, maybe I missed, but where in Pittsfield do you end up for this one that starts at Pittsfield? Well, Upper Michigan. Upper Michigan. Yeah, Thank you. kind of way up there. So yeah, part of the planning grant would look at the NEPA process with the Forest Service, work with the Forest Service, you know, um, it's a valuable resource to have the Forest Service to, they have a team of scientists, so when you propose something, they look at every single component, so, all the impact. So they want and that's important. That. You know, we want to stay away from wilderness. We want to stay away from true sensitive areas. Um, you know, there's a place for everything. So, so Forest uh, Service has probably got some kind of idea where it's all, they must have it all plotted out. Uh, I wouldn't say that he was asking they have plotted. They don't have it all plotted out. They have, the, yeah, the one heading south. Um, <laughs> In the IRP, in the IRP, yeah. there's a yeah. there's a draft yeah. proposal. Yeah, I recall that phase too. Between Rochester and Pittsfield, we do have it laid out. Some of it's actually flagged. Um, it hasn't been approved. We're still, you know, going through public input, comments, and all that. Um, but that is, you know, we've realized how much work this took, and realized we need some help with this for the rest of it. So that's where we figured a planning grant would come in, and we look to continue this. Um, I have a couple questions. Uh, what is the name of the trail? Bellow Mom. So that's, B -B that's the official Bello, name of Bello the whole trail. Yeah, okay. Bay Bello, but everybody calls it Bellow. In the planning, <laughs> yeah, in the planning grant, will there be uh, provisions for potential rescues? The, uh, the money wouldn't be used for the rescues, but it, it it could be used to study what resources might be needed right, to conduct we would, rescues. We would need to have the resources here, and we do have some in place, but we would need to have the resources to do a rescue up there if we needed to, because it's up on the hill. Um, the spurs will be coming down to the town, so you're involving, do you have any idea how much percentage of private land you'll be dealing with? And how will you get the permissions for that? Would it be like vast every year, or? Yeah, gen generally uh, every ten year agreement. You okay, know, it's just less years. paperwork, but you know, we it that, depends on like, yeah, it depends on the landowner and their wishes, it's their land, so you know, I'd be respectful of that. Um, most of it is most of it is public, but yeah, Bimba Vermont Mountain Bike Association has a pretty um, pretty well vetted ten year landowner agreement that they've been using. It's been pretty effective up in the kingdom and northeast kingdom. What what do you anticipate the date of completion? Like five years out? <laughs> Good question. We've we've been asked that a couple of times. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty ambitious project. We just imagine someone say, hey we want to build a long trail. You know, I don't know if they do that. <laughs> and um, and what's involved in the building of the trail? Um, it, we, we're we're talking about uh, Ten foot no, swamp? No, no, no. Two to three feet. So yeah, yeah if you look at that in the picture. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the trees need to cut back a little bit too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yes, sometimes. They made five dollars a foot. Would you uh, uh you have a contractor working with Rasta right now, correct? So you would just continue to hire your own contractors, or would yeah, you go out bid? Yeah, it depends on um, the area. You know, generally the Forest Service, uh, we hire for the ranger station, the Forest Service uh, requires all trails be built to the International Mountain Bike Association standard, which is a pretty well vetted, you know, sustainable way of building trails. Um, but, you know, not every trail should be like that necessarily. Um, you know, there, there's a different different flavors, you know, like when you go skiing, there's some extreme steep woods and then there's some beginner green easy trail. So there's kind of the same concept, concept with mountain biking. So we're trying to shoot for the middle of the ground, intermediate uh, trails. That, it's you great know. that you're using mountain biking and forest service in the same paragraph. You know, <laughs> it's, it's that and uh, your organization will be so organized it will even carry its own insurance? 
Yeah, so uh, Vermont Mountain Bike Association does have insurance that covers all okay. of its chapters. Perfect. And Vermont Hut Association has its own insurance around the huts. Okay. Um, okay. So it's been a pretty well vetted. You know, I I would say that the uh, Vermont Land Owner Protection, um, that law that was passed has been really dry and true. And it's been great to protect the private landowner. If you have a trail on your property, um, mm -hmm. you're not liable as long as you don't charge. And that's one thing we would not charge for any trail use. It's free, open to the public. Okay. Um, that's not the like, idea. Not like Kingdom Trails. Not like Kingdom trails. trails. And that's going to be a challenge to, to fund the trail. Okay. Um, but, but I think most of us feel strongly that it, sh it should be free, um, open yeah. to everybody to use. Yeah. Um, so. Should we talk a little bit about the Dwayne, just that kind of example in Bailey. Sure, yeah, go ahead briefly talk so about that. Just, yeah, just to kind of draw a parallel to kind of imagine it. So you asked about how long it might take to, to build the whole thing. So we're talking a little over 80 miles of single track. And in Ohio, in Wayne National Forest, um, there is a new trail being, uh, built. I think they're going to be breaking ground later this year on it. It's called the Bailey's Trail. And it's going to be 88 miles of new single track mountain bike multi-use uh, trail that runs through um, through that town, or through eight towns actually. And so the the Forest Service uh, worked with some other kind of nonprofit groups similar to what's going on here and um, they were able to conduct through a couple of other grants uh, a similar economic impact uh, assessment and study uh, to determine what it could mean for, for that area. And as a result, they were able to um, work with a, a private, for-profit um, investment called Impact Investment Company um, to, to fund the entire project, which is gonna be about $5.5 million. Um, so it's our hope um, that this, this grant, if we were to, to go down that road, this grant could lead to significant um, investment in the, the overall project. Um, and so that's kind of why we, we need like the seed money to see like, you know, How's it going to look, and and then that becomes more attractive um, mm -hmm. to folks who might want to help us build that. The real intern gets it comes up. Kind of yeah. <laughs> Joe, so this isn't for any tech company, but um, just curious if you have uh, some mountain bikers developed a way to prevent bootleg trails from being formed, because that's a huge problem I know where there's mountain biking. Right. I know things have evolved since, you know, a lot of that stuff started, like, at the Kingdom Trails, but... I can take it or you can take it. Yeah, so I think I heard everything you said. Um, like trails, how do we avoid that? Yeah, um, the legal trails, I should say. Yeah. Yeah, so basically, uh, from Mountain Bike, so Mountain Bike Association has proven um, when you have local chapter representation, um, you're less likely to see that. Um, you know, people take ownership in the trails that are, you know, legal um you know that is i'm not going to say i'm not going to say every trail the legal trail will be prevented but it definitely uh, has shown um be less of an issue when you have organized trail recreation opportunity there is something not there offered that's that's sometimes why that thing happened um and the same thing with backcountry skiing you know when we have um what brandy gap was a great example um we provide um, legal backcountry areas managed responsibly, working with land partners. Um, you see less uh, illegal cutting, snipping. Um, does it prevent it? No, but we provide a good example of what we try to do. Um, I'm just wondering if, um, when have you decided that you're definitely applying for this training grant, and if so, when do you have to do it? Have we decided when we're gonna apply for it? Have you decided, it sounds like- Yeah, well, that's why we're here really essentially is to ask the town. Um, the idea was that the town would be applying for this grant um, with a uh, co-sponsor or support from Hancock and Granville. So if the Rochester community is behind this idea, this concept, um, I would follow up with Two Rivers and then we would go uh, reach out to Hancock and Granville which I met with a few individuals, not the town representative. Um, they seemed some interest in that. So the, the Rochester would lead the ship, if you will, uh, in the grant application. And one thing we want to make sure that if the town is not planning to apply for another planning grant of any sort, um, you know, want to compete with that. If that is the case, then we can come back later. Um, but, you know, I just wanted to 
Sleep clear on that. Yeah. Yeah. So we would work with with the town to, you know, make sure the grant, uh, whatever was filled out properly. Work yeah. with Hancock and, and Granville as well. Two, two Rivers would do most of the heavy lifting, you know. Um, so we would work with them, and then obviously come back to, with the town, have to have a public hearing about it. It's a very um, transparent process, so it's not like. We go and apply for, you know, we start filling out the application, you'll see us again, we'll give another presentation probably. Um, two Rivers would be with us helping work with the town. So your, your ask here is, is support from the town to, so at this point I should probably sit over there because I own a bike shop and it'd be possible conflict of interest, so I'm not you guys. <laughs> How about horses on these trails? How about horses? Um, yeah, <laughs> I wish. Yeah. I wish it out there. <laughs> this is more of a safety issue. Join ask about horses using the trail as well. Favor or against it? Oh, I'm in favor, of it, but I can say that as a person now, yes, not as a representative of the town, because I don't want to be doing things bad. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm totally in favor. I think it would be. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just want to answer Joanne's question. She asked about horses to use the trail, and uh, we work with the Forest Service, and I have actually grew up horseback riding and all that. So I actually asked the same question, but it's more of a safety concern. You know, you have a mountain biker coming around a corner, there's not much of a line of sight in the woods. Um, so generally, the Forest Service, you know, most of the trail would be on Forest Service lands. They'd like to keep the two uses separate from each other for safety concerns. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I'm good. I mean, um, I I think you should continue, and I think the town good. will support you through this first step. Um, and then I would invite you to come back and keep us well informed yes. of how yeah. we progress. Of course. And um, I would do that. and so yes, I, I'm giving it a thumbs up. I, I think it's up. good for all of the state of Vermont. Make a motion for let it pursue. I, I'll make a motion right now to uh, pursue this project and uh, see what, the, as long as we're informed all the time about what's going on. I second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> You're good. <Here> we go. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's interesting. Thank you, thank you guys for right. sharing with us. Thanks. Thanks. I'll be using it. segues right into sidewalks. Bruce, do you want to? Um, um, yeah. Um, did you know a couple of years ago when the library changed their front entrance, the uh, crosswalk <laughs> from the park side to the library side was moved to the south. So it's directly across from Pierce Hall. And a short section, maybe 15 feet or so, of sidewalk was installed in front of Pierce Hall. Um, but I've noticed over the last year that uh, eight times out of ten when the library is open, someone is parking on the sidewalk, not recognizing that it is a sidewalk. And I'm wondering if something can be done to let people know that that is not a parking spot, that is a sidewalk. Uh, either through a sign or maybe you need a curb right there to delineate that section. So you come across from the park side, you go on the sidewalk, and then you go into the library and up the stairs. But you can't do that when there's a car parked there. No. Um, 
the last two years when they've been painting the crosswalks, um, they paint the park side no parking for the 10, 12 feet, whatever it is on each side, but they've never painted the Pierce Hall side. And I've asked them for the last two years to please put that cross hatching, no parking there, and they just say it's not in the plans. I've called to the um, Rochester Town Garage, or the, That's the state, state highway, the yeah. state highway people. Yeah. With no response, I believe Judy Lee, Julie Readerer has also called them to ask that they do that because when people park there, the people from Pierce Hall that are coming to the library across the crosswalk with their walkers are then out in the middle of Route 100 to try to get by the cars that are parked there in the crosswalk area. So well, that would definitely help to paint it, but it sounds like uh, curbing would be the most effective way of mm -hmm. dealing with that, which would also be the most effective way of keeping people off the sidewalk um, on the 100 side of Park House, which is also broken down dramatically. Probably a lot of them people driving on that. So, so we have a lot of sidewalk work that needs to be done in town, and, and, and it's important to gather these little bits and pieces of details to, to fold into that. But um, how quickly we can put a curve in there, um, I don't know. It's something on our, our big sidewalk study analysis, their final comment was it's most efficient to get a bunch of money and do it the whole town at once. And I don't think that that's the way that we're going to be able to do it. I think we're going to need to attack piece by piece and maybe some bigger chunks with some grant money. But but this is would definitely be a, a hot spot because um, for you know it's safety effective purposes. safety purposes. Nancy, did you have something you want to say? Couldn't you talk to the state about just having those hash marks put on that we way? Should definitely do that. And, you know, that at least would um, alert people yeah. that. Talk to them before they do their painting page. Yeah. I mean, that's the easiest. The low hanging fruit should definitely do that. But I think that the curving is, is the real solution to that. And that also may help in terms of now how it's going to complicate. Now and then, we use the loader to go and clear stuff over there. It's uh, but not that much. Uh, sidewalk. The sidewalk, yeah. yeah. When they do the sidewalks, they do drag drag. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Before we dig into um, any more uh, meaty subjects, we'll, um, I want to um, present the minutes from the meeting of April 23rd, which I'd like to approve as typed up. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Those, um, we've got the amendments, and Joan, you're on. Okay, I got this. Stand up so you can hear me. Um, just a summary of uh, what's happening with the wastewater project, and I'll just do sort of the administrative side of it, and Terry can fill you in on the more technical stuff. Um, but uh, let's see. So Hebert um, construct excavating is set to start. The contractor is set to start work on June second, and he's going to be starting at the uh, pump station at site one first. Um, to get things underway. Uh, the expectation is the work is going to take somewhere between 60 and 90 days. Most of it will probably be done in 60 days. Um, and the required completion date, uh, I think it's September 30th. Is that September? I forget. Was it September 30th? No, yeah. it's the first. The first. The first. Okay. Yeah. All right, couldn't remember that. So, um, got a lot of work to do in a relatively short period of time. He's going to be bringing a construction trailer on site. Um, it's going to be set up on site three. And so there was some discussion at the, um, uh, the pre-construction meeting that we had last week with Du Bois and King in the state about um, there's still going to be a couple weeks of school happening um, at the elementary school um, after work has started. 
So Terry is going to be talking to the school district or has been talking to them about uh, make sure, making sure, oh, that's their permit right away, sorry, but to make sure there's some kind of fencing, snow fencing, or some other barrier so that if, the, say, the kindergartners are going out for their um, activities in the, in the woods down there, that they don't get into the construction area at all. Um, it's a clear kind of bright line uh, that they stay away from. Terry's going to be talking to the school district about adding a permit right away uh, across the school, what's now the school property, and once it gets transferred to the district. Um, because right now, obviously, you don't need a right away because it's on town land. But when it does get transferred, we'll have to make sure the town retains the right to cross that that area uh, to be able to get to site uh, three. Um, there's going to be two meetings a month taking place during the construction period. One is going to be uh, a site inspection, uh, wherever they happen to be working, and the other one's going to be more of a job related meeting, which will probably take place um, here in the town office. Um, and there was discussion also about uh, seeing if we can obtain a backup access easement across uh, the rail toll property, just in case there's any complications or issues that arise. I did, I did talk to him and he okay. was willing to do that. I didn't get anything in writing, but I at least prepped it for, I think that the contract. I'm not looking for him. Uh, is yeah, that I part of his property in a land trust or something? Or he sold his development rights? I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm sure. I remember when that and there was a thing about yeah. that, but I can't remember. I can look that up. It's in the foot point anyway. Yeah, I mean, it's not. We're not talking about building anything, just talking about access. Using the old right. B-line right. road, that's right. that. So there is, if there is an actual easement, conservation easement on it, he would have to get permission from the easement holder, right. the the holder. Trust, Vermont Land oh, Trust, wow. yeah. to grant the right of way. Mm -hmm. um, so let's make sure we have that yeah. I dotted. Yeah, mm -hmm. Okay. Um, on to the village center designation. And I haven't heard from you. Uh, June 11th for a meeting starting 4:45. Is that good? It's yeah, a Monday so. before a select board meeting, where um, there'll be a walk about the district with Richard Amor, who is from the Community Development Agency that oversees the village designation process. It's you know step one that we're required to do yeah. when we're reapplying for a new designation. Um, so that'll be an hour to an hour and a half. We'll just walk sort of the boundaries, see if any pe people have any comments, questions, whatever. Um, um, excuse me, John, I didn't get the date. June 11th. June 11th, it's a Monday, I'm sorry. Um, and if you have suggestions for a couple of business owners in the village who might, you know, you might want to have along, let me know so I can include them in the invitation list. <laughs> Um, I, I don't think Richard's looking for a great big crowd, but maybe a, you know, a handful of people is the way to describe for people who just, you know, have a direct interest in, mm -hmm. in how the whole designation is. Park House. So we can, yeah, we know if you have any ideas yeah. in the next week or so, for that Park House is a good one. Um, and then afterwards, we can put him first on the agenda for June 11th for yeah. the select board meeting, and he'll do a 20 to 30 minute presentation, which I think just covers the whole process of how you apply for a village designation, which some of you here already know quite a bit about, but I'm sure it's changed and it's probably more complicated than it was last time. So, like that. Um, next, let's see. Um, you. I think some of you have seen already grant and aid uh, Department of Environmental Conservation we have a current grant and aid um, uh, grant <laughs> to do work on let's see that one is on um, North, no already the current one is on um, town line road right mm -hmm. yes and that needs to be finished by June 30th so I just wanted to find out how that was going because in advance of June 30th we have to have information on all the expenses what are you know that we've got at least two thousand dollars in match um, and then have Rita Cito come <coughs> to take a look at things so can you just give me an idea of where, where you are in that this week 
Okay. And what is what part is is being bid? Is it the Everything. ditch? The ditching. Oh, okay. Well, it's only ditched in two culverts. In two, two culverts. Right. And do you have a you know, anticipated start <coughs> date for that? Whenever they want to, as long as they can have it done by the end of June. Okay. So all the work will be done by a contractor. Mm -hmm. Sure. Get on the um, and so then there's a question of uh, they plan to do a round two, uh, the Branton A, um, similar, same criteria as before on sections of roads in town that are hydrologically connected, and it's work that would be required under or is re will be required under the new uh, permit. So, um, and that has sort of a short time frame for uh, pulling together as well. They would like us to return a signed letter by June 22nd saying that we're interested in being considered. Um, so we have, just for a little background, 25 to 30 uh, miles of hydrologically connected roads, so that clocks qualifies us for a grant of $11,300 next round, which is a little bit less than when we got uh, this round, we got a $12,000 grant. And they base it on the mileage, both mileage. Yeah. And there is a 20% nat town match required, which would be 28 25 if we ask for all 11300 which means we could do a project of somewhere in the neighborhood of $14,000. And the match can be in kind um, or cash. So, um, do you want to think about it? Um, Let's start the paperwork and do it. We have no you choice. Yeah. We have yeah. to do this. Yeah. Oh, okay. I also um, have maps of where the target places in the town are that need to be worked on to comply with the, with the law. If anybody wants them, I made that 10 copies. I'm sure everyone wants to know if it's in their neighborhood. <laughs> There's certainly lots of opportunities to do things all over town, but obviously you want to pick things that are going to be the highest priority. Um, for water quality purposes, so you might say, well, there's lots of places on the class four roads where um, there could be projects done, but that's maybe not a first priority. Oh yeah, but there's there's lots of things to be done, obviously. So yeah, this is yeah. more, you know, removing berms, uh, greater berms, or replacing not stream culverts necessarily, because those are big and expensive, but just um, runoff, yeah. you know, as opposed to stream. There's plenty of things to be done. It's all yeah. all grades of, of expense and complications. So these are the more the easier ones. Um, so I don't maybe you can think about it and maybe by the next meeting, roughly meeting, to have an idea. Of which project to attend? Yeah, yeah. Or if you want to zero in. Uh, I, think, I assume Rita Cito would be involved also and you want to come out. You know, take a look at places yeah. with Dan and sort of um, confer on what would make a good project that we could rely on getting funded. Anything pop into your head right off the bat that is a hot target? Take a look. Pick a road, yeah. Pick a road. Four thousand dollars. We're gonna have to come up with a lot of our own. Yeah. Um, so on to the class two roadway grant. Um, yeah, I know you gave me some information on on uh, road crew time that was put in, but I had a few other questions I could um, ask you. So. This was on uh, North Hollow Road. Was the entire 4.2 miles graveled? We still have one to do on that. Yeah. Okay. And the four and a half miles of ditching work still to be done also. Do you have an idea of, do you have a time frame for that? You've gotten longer on this one. Mm -hmm. The grant expires in the end of December of 2019. So is that? Okay. Okay, so 
just are you hoping to do that this summer as well? Before the first of July. Um, I don't know if any of you have noticed down at the park and ride there was some planting done by the White River Partnership and a BYCC crew and what they ask um, all of the places landowners where they do planting is to uh, sign a simple uh, landowner agreement which just states that you, you agree to you know, maintain the trees as best you can no guarantee that they'll all survive but um, it does talk about, you know, sort of refraining from doing too much mowing. In this case, I talked to Greg Russ about, well, there's going to be some mowing, obviously, we have to do there. And he said it's fine. You don't have to sort of take that totally, literally. That no, we do the trees. Huh? Right. Yeah. Keep the trees. Yeah. They create trees and mostly shrubs, really, dogwoods and lower growing yeah. things. So we really need to have a conversation with the, the our mowing contractor. Right. Yeah. Maybe put out some stakes for the first couple of years, so it's really clear. You know where they should. You know, and there's a plenty of space between the end of the sort of the paved area and where the planting started. Um, so it wouldn't be like it's not like a real tight space where it's not going to be obvious where where the plants are. And I don't know if you saw this. Dot leaks. Uh, Department of Environmental Conservation's Drinking Water and Groundwater Protection Division is offering free leak deten detection surveys. Mm -hmm. um, have you seen this? Not I got it in an email. We really uh, don't need it. Okay. 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 okay, it was just, just a question about whether you thought it was. Or not. Uh, oh, it's, he told me last time we had him, he didn't have at least 15,000 gallons a day or more. Okay. He's not a problem. All right. He's not going to be able to find it. Okay. Just so you know about it. Um, yeah, we got it from Mountain View, like Mountain View. And then last, this uh, was a memo from Two Rivers. They are looking for a Rochester member to join the Transportation Advisory Committee of Two Rivers. I, I guess we maybe had one, someone at one time, but we don't now. Uh, and it basically is a committee that guides the transportation priorities within the Two Rivers area, uh, which roads get attention or that kind of thing. So I don't know if you can think of any candidates who might be interested in doing that. I have already by default on our transportation committee, aren't we, by how much we go to them for help. But. They want something more formal than that. Yeah, it's it's someone who would be looking at things from a, a region-wide perspective, as opposed to just it would be a town representative. But um, you know, the idea. Nominee Jim. Yes, Jim. <laughs> well, thank you. Well. <laughs> well, can I leave this with you? If you sure. think of anyone, yeah. I don't think it's the end of the world if you don't have yeah, anyone yeah. on the committee. But from time to time, it might be useful to have someone yeah. to speak up. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought is all I have. Thank you. Well, uh, I've got a question. Where does the grant uh, on the stormwater disposal for the village stand? Is that it? is in process. They are due, yeah, I think they've done all their field work and they're due to make a presentation to the town on their preliminary findings sometime in August is their is that right? date. Yeah. yeah. And do, do boy and Kane doing that? No, that's a, what's the name of a watershed? Oh, God. <coughs> I can't remember the name of it now. Uh, well, it's a consulting it. firm, Watershed Consulting Associates. That's what it is, no, WCA. Okay. They're okay. based in Waitsfield, I believe. It's off and running. Yes. Oh, yeah. They've been working for the last number of months while you've been in yeah, Florida. Good. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Dan, you got any? Exciting news in the highway front? Uh, that north, the, the town line ditching. Mm -hmm. There's two town or two driveway culverts up there that are going to have to be changed. Mm -hmm. um, either that or we're going to have to, I don't know what we're going to do. One of them is a broken ground. Mm -hmm. and there's water on both sides of it. And the other one there, there's never been any culvert that I know of in the driveway. Excuse me, did you say town line road? Yeah. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Alright, you want to get me the information and I can contact them? Yeah. Yeah. 
and uh, Mike's pit's ready for gravel. But Florence crushed stones. Uh, crusher burnt up. Burnt three, up? three weeks ago. Yeah. Hopefully they're getting a portable one in. <coughs> Hopefully it'll be done by the end of this week, so they can haul, start hauling gravel to us. Um, they aren't sure yet. They have, they, have, they have no idea when. Whose question was that? Florence. Florence was mm -hmm. no. So they don't know when the, the real plant will be back up and going. But hopefully they'll have one going. Hopefully this week. So they'll be bringing stuff then. After that, hopefully. Hard life being a rock crusher, I guess. Uh, I have a request, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> Speaking about the uh, grading, um, the last uh, Brook Street. Uh, so the last time we put something like recently, a couple of weeks ago, uh, there's always this like uh, line of gravel that's pushed aside, and and it's pretty tall. It's a, a couple of feet, you know. So when I come down from my from Chickadee Lane. I have to stay on the left side of the road, like the, the Are when you I drove. About when the grading is happening, yeah, the yeah, it was just the yeah. whole line that's, of. That's, 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 that's but that's, how do I? I cannot cross. I cannot drive over it to get to the right side right. Uh, without, like you know, I tried once, and like my car was just like hang, like hanging on it. Because it's it's too it's just too yeah. high, so I had to the last time I drove to work I had to go all the way to the end of Brook Street, driving on the left side, like hoping that nobody will be coming from the other direction. I guess if you're really nervous about it, you could go the other way and take the long way. <laughs> That's I mean, not that a might be, but no, I no was way that you can grade the road without going. Well, my the front my front request side. would be that maybe from occasionally like from some there'll be a like a break that i don't know if that can be done yes. but i mean how how else can i go over that bump of gravel fast fast <laughs> 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 yeah, you can leave a berm or gra a gravel on my road anytime anytime <laughs> <laughs> i'm ready we are, we are just talking about that one day that it's being yeah, but that, that happened to me like when I have to go to work. That's like yeah, uh, yeah. I encountered it as well. Yeah, just go slow. That's road maintenance. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. We done that. I'm not coming. I have to wait now until he's done. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so just go the long way around. If you want to stay on the right side of the road, you know. You'll pretty soon there'll be mountain bike trails. <laughs> 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 yeah, there you go. You can ride your bike. Roads get graded. Well, yeah, actually, yeah, for small bl they all are. blessings. <laughs> yeah. well, okay. No, I'm, yeah. They do every year. <laughs> yeah, eventually. <laughs> actually, one time, I know somebody was coming down from the other direction, and, like, it happens, like, he had a shovel, and he, so he, like, flattened, you know, like, part of that uh, thing that I could drive over. Yeah, don't worry about cars. It's in that situation. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We all have. We all have. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm just, that, I'm, I was just asking, I, like, I don't know how this works. Yeah. You're going to back door. Um, so, that's about, about it now for that. Um, before we talk about the library deed, which might be longer, I'll just do a quick check-in with Terry on the utilities. Anything, we kind of covered a lot of that with Jones updates. Is there anything you want to add? I met with the principal and the uh, school board on the, uh, they're actually going to probably put up snow fence maybe next week mm. and put the trailer in. I told them they really had to cut the kids off from going down yeah. all together. Just a safety issue. We can't, it's too close to what's going on. Yeah. And they didn't have any problem with it. Yeah. Uh, and I haven't seen Bill yet, but they were going to try waiting. Most of it's not going to happen until mostly school's out. Yeah. The only conflict I'm going to have is a Suzuki week. That might be a week that they might want to use that metal. They, they, well, but the schoolyard's really busy during that week. I mean, there's people walking everywhere and there's cars. So they're hoping just to 
when they they're going to set the tanks first right. they decided and so that won't be you know they're gonna move a crane in there the tanks come that one day and it's not like they're gonna be in and out a hundred times and i talked to mike and they're gonna they're gonna stockpile all their sand down there in the pit so when they dig it all out i got an idea either they'll dig it out i'm assuming maybe dig it out and bring some back or they'll dig it all out and just dump it in there with level it off with those i no idea uh but that sounds like most of that's going to be done after school's out so on the principal then she didn't have any problems she said if you know if we have something that needs to get moved be stops there and she'd be glad to move it says it's got to be done and that's the way it is yeah right so other than that i don't see as uh being a I think they're pretty capable. I think they should go pretty soon. Yeah, we'll just, you know, be that one week. It's the only one I could think of. It's kind of too bad in the same week they take off. Mm. You know, he <laughs> says he takes off the week of the fourth. <laughs> 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 it's the next week when they. <laughs> yeah, it'll work. Yeah. All right, so um, let's go on to um, Jeanette. You want to reopen the conversation about the library deed? I think that's why Bill was here. Okay. Uh, before I do, like I would ask, I would like to ask Patty to be, um, especially as a new member, to be more considerate about uh, citizens like uh, needs. If I raise an issue, like please don't tell me that this is just one day. It was concerning to me, so well, like I'd just like, yeah. I'm saying for myself. And if you were yeah. talking about a long period of time or just the one day, yeah. Yeah, just, 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 just mm -hmm. saying. Um, okay, the library. Um, so this is like an ongoing saga, as you, we all know, and, uh, but um, in the past, um, the select board had agreed uh, to um, move the, Deed to uh, from the library trustees onto the town. I don't believe we agreed to do that. We agreed to look into it and research. Okay. Well, the understanding. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. Uh, the understanding. Agreed to, to okay. make that transfer. No. Okay. Well. So keep clear. Oh yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. The select board was in favor. Uh, the, our understanding was that the select board was in favor of moving the deed. Larry Strauss. Uh, uh, again, I think you're putting words in the select board's mouth. We were in favor of researching it. That was as far as we got, is to look into it. Uh, I you stayed know, corrected. Okay. I stand corrected. It was, our understanding was that we, Larry Strauss was in favor of, okay. of moving the Okay. Um, after that, recently, you know, we, um, we re, re, uh, revisited the issue because um, it was, uh, you know, and we had talked to, we invited Joan to come to one of our like uh, trustees, trustee meetings, and and you came and you um, told us that the uh, town attorney was not in favor of doing that. Right. And his um, his reasoning was that he um, would not be. Well, his question was like, why would the trustees want to do it in the first right. place? Like, so he did not see any. And real it re yeah. exactly like, yeah. but our reasoning is the trustees' reasoning is that uh, since the library is owned by the town, why wouldn't the building be uh, be owned as? Uh, I mean, all the. The library is like a gem, maybe you can add, like I'm sorry, I'm not feeling well today, so I'm like, my brain is not working correctly, but uh, is... Uh, no, is what you're trying to say that the deed, the, the current deed says, gives ownership to the trustees who are five elected town officials, ipso facto, right. it, it is the town. And just for the clarity, um, of the ownership because it keeps getting uh, raised from time to time uh, about who that it's 
if the library building isn't owned by the town, then it's not a town responsibility. Um, it's, I think we've proven that it is a town responsibility over and over again by the fact that every year in the budget we allocate a certain amount of money for it. The town voted to do quite a large bond to do a massive renovation of it. The, the issue, just to clarify that, is in the deed that originally gave the building to the trustees. As you guys know, you've heard this many times, and the deed was pretty clearly specified that if the ownership changes, it, that it would, um, there's the first right of refusal by any descendant of the family that gave it to the trustees. And uh, the, the, our, our legal opinion was um, pointed out that, that fully 50% of the libraries in the state of Vermont are held this way and the other half are held by the town so it's not an un unusual situation but of a bigger concern was was that why put it in any jeopardy why put the town in any possibility of having to go to legal action to protect that asset if we don't have to if there's no real benefit to changing it on paper there, there's <coughs> no tangible benefit to the town to change that it's it but we would be putting the town in a potential liability if someone somewhere decides that boy you know I'm a descendant of that family and that I can sue the town because I should have been consulted and the local descendants of that family are are fine with it and not interested in taking the, the building back but they they don't know how far that reaches and in, in, in this day of the internet when people can search this small minutia from their desktop you, you don't know who is going to pop up and, and, and the lawyer's opinion is like why go through the hassle and the expense to put put the building at risk when it's perfectly stable and fine as it is so that was the the legal response that we paid for and, and got in, in evaluating that. I mean, there was years when and Robert was on the board and he was presenting this to lawyers and they failed to get back to him, maybe because it was such a confusing situation and they didn't want to do it. We finally found a lawyer who was willing to dig into it and he was pretty, pretty clear that that, that was his opinion. So that's, um, that's basically what I presented at the meeting at the, the library board. Um, uh, six months ago. But he also said that uh, the attorney would get in touch with our attorney in the town, and it never happened. So we kind of feel that you know there has been no communication, that uh, at least some closure. And uh, it would be nice for the attorney to, uh, since uh, our attorney that we've been working with has done all the groundwork and uh, you know even prepared a deed, mm -hmm. but he's never heard from the town attorney which you had indicated that he might at least contact you know our attorney so that would be yeah would be nice well, I'm not I'm not sure for what reason if the advice that we've got is that it's 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 kind of a, a waste of time but, but Jim did you have a comment yeah I mean the advice that was given was to leave it alone and stop costing money Yes. Lawyers talking to lawyers is going to cost the town money two different ways. Yeah. Leave it alone. Yeah. So, so that's basically what um, we didn't feel like we were in a position where we were trying to work out an agreement here. It was pretty clear we had the, the information and, and I thought I presented that pretty, pretty clearly. Um, we didn't feel that was the, kind of the final. Uh, Marvin, you know, is, there, yeah. is there any reason that this building is going to put the town more at risk than any other uh, town buildings? And if the, so, why? The, the reason is because of the original deed. The language in the original deed puts it out there that if the ownership should ever change, that the first right of refusal goes to a, the family or descendant thereof. That's what makes it different than any other town building. At the town, and that, and that was, and it's just because of the, the legal language in the original deed. And that's that's what it's based on. You have seen the opinions of former attorneys that have researched this, right? I've seen the some, team. and I've seen the one of the attorney that the town hired to look at both. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, guess. Yeah, I think he's seen that, yeah. but he can give it to that. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably the same document you've, you've seen before. And how different is it from the bingo property to be transferred? That was also deeded, right, to, uh, to the property? school? That's the school oh. property. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. Like, I'm just asking. Um, like, that, I, I, how different is that? I don't that think it had that, that stipulation. Clause. Yeah, it didn't have that clause that, that it would revert to the, the original family. You can keep that. I have it. not seen it, no, but, but I would suggest that. that maybe Mr. Barlow had ought to answer a letter that he got from the library's attorney. It is not professional ethics not to respond, and he never responded to the library's attorney. Well, I suppose is, he is, didn't. Is he still your attorney? Yes, he didn't. Um, we didn't ask him to respond. He basically gave us his opinion on, we presented the information, we presented him with the original deed, and we presented him with the proposed other deed and we asked for his opinion of the two. So it was never, we were never entering into um, a negotiation with the attorney that created that second deed. That was presented to us as information. But well, but he asked you for guidance and whether, how to respond to the library's trustees uh, 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 attorney. Mm -hmm. and, and what was your guidance? It's, it's done. Our guidance was we, we accepted his, his opinion. Um, I mean, are you, so you're, um, we can spend more money to have him write a letter that says thanks, but no thanks, but uh, is that, is that um, I don't know if that's necessary. I mean, it's... Um, this has been researched by three attorneys mm -hmm. before Mr. Barlow. Mm -hmm. Okay, is he, maybe he wants to get some somebody on his team then too <coughs> because it's been researched there's no reason why it can't be needed no i have not seen the letter no and no. uh no. and i think that the a point that the, the big question is why, why to what for what, what purpose reason? what is the reason? for what what is the what is the benefit what is the purpose why 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 go through all this the trustees are running a library right and they're not intending to manage a building and they've done it for a long time, and so forth. And, and that's about the size of it. And they can see deficiencies that need to be done. The windows is a given. That's still going to be maintained, right. and so forth. That's the only thing that's stipulated in this deed. Right, but it's still, the, it's, it's been, it's, it is being maintained. I mean, it's always a struggle to maintain. We we skipped fixing that leaky chimney to paint part of the library two years ago. It's 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 not like right. it's not happening. There is, you know, the library has been being maintained. Yeah. The, the we'll issue is, well. oh, we have a light out too. Yeah, but um, <laughs> <laughs> they need a bigger ladder to get yeah. the flies in. Yeah. I I just don't see the value in in. Um, prolonging the, the conversation over something where there's no fair, there's no tangible benefit to the town to spend the money to do this because it's a stable situation as it is. It is Rochester's public library and right. that is a tangible reason to want it to be Rochester's public library. Right. I think it's a good term. How many uh, other libraries throughout the state were set up the same way we have? Set about 50-50. Leave it alone. Yeah. Stop spending it's, it's money. It's not an unusual situation. It's a very, it's a very common, it's a very common situation in how it's held, and it is, it is the town library. It's, it's, you know, it's, um, it's, it's not really. Um, there's, it doesn't make sense. To, to put it in jeopardy, you know, as is, is unlikely as that is to be, why spend money to put it in jeopardy that someone in the future might have to defend a lawsuit against, you know? I'm not sure what you're putting in jeopardy, but... The ownership of the building, as yeah. stipulated by the original deed. Yeah. It's, that's, it's, it's, in, it's in writing, and it's, um, it's, I don't know what else to say about that. 
Isn't it interesting that uh, other attorneys have, have uh, found it differently? A lot of attorneys are really good at making work for themselves. Yeah. Well, maybe, so, maybe there's know. other attorneys out there. Yeah. But, uh, Anyway, um, is there anything else you want to say about that? I mean, you're in the real estate world. Do you have any insight into this? The, the only afterthought I had that that I am not an attorney, but mm -hmm. um, if there had been, if if we can put a public notice in 50 newspapers across the United States for 30 days to say, um, if you are an heir of Leslie and Chester Pierce. Um, you know, can you step forward if you want to lay claim to the library building or forever hold your peace? Is, is that a factor? Um, I, I would think that you could ask your attorney if, if, if that would uh, put that clause to rest. But it, it, yeah, risk, it, it, put it, up the risk. <laughs> it is still at risk. Why, it, in, the, in the essence of the thing is, what's the benefit? It doesn't change anything. So why, why, why do it? That was, um, you know, he says right now is like why, Mark, why would you want to do this? Margaret, I have a question for you. Do, do you believe that the transfer of this deed will increase the funding for the maintenance of this building in some way? Is that is that what your concern is? Do I believe what? Do you I don't, believe I don't it's going think to? It's, uh, hmm? I don't think it's uh, funding. It's the uh, responsibility of the trustees that we're talking about. So okay, so you're trying to do not so not now to trying to reduce the deeds, responsibility. Right. Of the the deed is giving the building to the trustees. Right. What responsibility well, do they have now on that building? The trustees have the responsibility. Have the responsibility. And, and to, the town to come to the, the bills. town and ask for money to and do anything. Yeah. They bring to our attention right. things that need to happen. They're occupying the building. It makes sense for them to be in touch with what needs to happen there and to communicate that to the town. I, I don't see where the, the 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 problem is for them to do that. I think we are occupying the building. I don't think they are. I think it's a public. That is occupying that building. Well, that trustees well, is managing the library day to day business. On our behalf. Yeah, well, it's really no it. different than the town garage or the firehouse. When yeah. something needs to be done with it, or this building, Joanne knows more about mm -hmm. what a leak is or you know anything like that. Yeah. If it's town garage, we're going to know more than yeah. anyone else. So. But you don't so own it. You don't know that. But the reason they aren't taking the deed over is because if somebody else in the Pierce family says it's not in the, they got the right to get the building now. They have the right to deed it, yeah. They have the right to the owner ownership of it. Right, right. That's right. Well, why take that chance? Let have it. Still be a library, then they can. No, then they, they can. They can move in and live in it. They can. They can live in it if that's way they want. What they want to do. That's right. Right. So why take that chance? They can have another building to the town who is who is using it, and the state is recognizing it as a Rochester public library. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Same as the other fifty percent that are that way in the state of Vermont. Yeah. Oh, I know. difference between a public library and a municipal library. I, I'd have to do some research on that, but I did I did get a little education on that, but not not enough to speak on it. But municipal is another another pivotal word there on public, public versus, versus municipal. municipal. Yeah. Actually the terminology should be municipal versus incorporated. Incorporated, yeah. thank you. Thank you. I, I they're they're both public libraries. Uh, okay. But it's just who owns the library, the and town our, versus... Our library is incorporated. No, our the library is municipal. municipal. It has okay. never been incorporated. Okay. What, what would this board do, and or the people of Rochester do, if all of the library trustees decided to resign their elected positions tonight? With the, the, the door would be locked, and I don't know who'd have the key, but Probably there's one here, is there? Is there a key I'm here? Sure there probably yeah. Is, yeah. So the town would have a key to it, and then what? 
that we were to find some new trustees. That's happened before. You saw the point? That, that's happened before, Nancy? That's happened several that's happened. times. Right. Really? Yeah. Where, yeah. if not all of them, most of them have, have resigned. Yeah. And not the so. far distant past. Yeah. So it's um, that we would appoint trustees. It all boils down mm -hmm. to why take the, the chance of, of spending money to put it in a, a less stable situation of ownership. You're, you're presenting it as it will be more stable if it's owned by the town, but we're, we'd be moving contrary to what the original deed says. So it it's just doesn't make, make sense to do that. As, as unreason, unlikely as it would be to happen, it's for, um, for no real benefit. Why incur the risk? Is what the what the you know what the thought is. At least my thought. But, um, the fact is, the Rochester are already paying the bills. Yes, they are. Yes. And so, so for, it's not. It's and not. The taxpayers are also electing the trustees. Right. The trustees would like to continue running the library, mm -hmm. but don't care about managing the building, other than they are occupying it as the fireman occupied so, the firehouse. So what we take care of the firehouse, so. Yes. <laughs> it's, um, and they work at it. Yeah, but wouldn't the trustees be the best ones uh, available to actually indicate issues with the building and report those to the board? I mm -hmm. and they're doing a job. Right. They're more intimate with it, that's what I'm, what I'm thinking. They're, they, they're more intimate with the building than we are. That puts, you know, that would put more responsibility, of course, on the board. Right. We have to go inspect the building more often. But I don't know. I don't. I don't see that their job would change very much at all. What would yeah. be different if um, this? If this is just a shuffling of paper, how would it be different as a trustee of the library? You're not liable for it. You're, uh, everything is covered under town insurance. Uh, is there any? specific thing that you feel would be different as a trustee if, if, the, if the, the town owned the building versus the trustees not you as an individual but the the office of the trustees what would what would change for you in your life? trustees to continue being as willing to work well with the select board as they have in the past. I mean, it's, the building is continues to be improved over what it has been, and I understand the, the offerings. We continue to have, you know, new offerings, and um, it's, I think it's a pretty successful library. And the, the insurance has no... The insurance companies have no problem with that. No. <laughs> no, the town is, is covered. So. Anyway, I'd, I'd like to put this to rest for now, unless there's something that else I hear come you. up about it. But, uh, thank you for your time and interest in it. And, you know. Thank you. Um, now let's talk about... Um, reinstating the weight limit on a West Hill Bridge, um, which basically during the construction that was knocked down, not because of the bridge, but because of the condition of the road above the bridge. And when um, the state kind of re-signed it, they never changed it. So what step do we need to do to do that? We just, just adopt that tonight at the meeting? Well, the way, the way I understand it is that it was a select board decision. Yeah. And then we notified AOT and the DMV on that's the status. And it is a road issue, not a bridge issue. So There was a road issue. It was a road issue. issue. And that was, had nothing to do with the bridge. But, but um, it's as far as I can tell, it's just a simple matter of us making a motion to revert that bridge, the road back to 16. The, the road itself, the way limit is 24,000. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the town road is, is 24,000. Is that right? 
Right. Well, the bridge is 16, so it I know. Yeah. I know. Well, my but point world, is, yes. I went to a workshop a couple of weeks ago, so it's kind of like fresh in my mind. Dangerous. That if, <laughs> hopefully not. If if the bridge limit is different from what the road limit is, and the road in, limit, as I understand, is by default 24,000, unless you designate something right. else. You just need to sign, you know, on each, each side that the bridge limit is different from what the road is. So you say it's 16,000 pounds. You just have to have signs on both right. ends. This, this right, that's for not a dead-end road, though. Yeah. This is a dead-end road, so it doesn't make any difference. No. So, okay. I mean, you can't, you can't, you can't access it from any other point, so. Uh -huh. Yeah, and the sign but is But the road there. itself is 24,000. Right. right. So, but, the sign but the bridge is, is 50 yards off the road, yeah. off road 173. Yeah. yeah. So you can't get past the bridge without 16,000 pounds anyway. So, but the road was put down to 10,000. Right. Because of the slot. And the yeah, sign is currently up. Yeah. It's often mistaken for a bridge weight limit sign because it doesn't matter. Huh. It doesn't really matter. But um, that that sign would come out, and a bridge weight sign bridge would go right. back in. That's this is a road about. weight sign. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's what I was saying. The state right. when they they changed those sign when they did 73, mm -hmm. they put all the signs yeah. on 73. So right. I got put because right. it's still on record that it's a ten thousand right. pound road. And, and I believe that, you told me that you had a sixteen thousand pound sign mm -hmm. that you could put in. Right. But we get I mean I can put it in any time you can tell me, but you need to get hold of the state and well we just have to it wasn't course. their decision. We just have to well, notify them. Right, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You have to you three have to decide so to I'd, notify I'd those move guys. To, to make that right. change yes. in the I, I would second that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No in favor? Aye. 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 And I will notice the state. Notify the state. Right. I may ask Joan to help in that area. Just we may just want to notify AOT properly. Uh, properly yeah. that we're, we're yeah. reverting it back to sixteen thousand. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I would say that um, you could probably change that sign. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Immediately. And okay. I see you have I'm, one I'm more. I'm sorry. Time. I forgot. Like I said, like my brains are working well today. Uh, I was asked by the uh, the last trustee meeting to uh, request that the select board please. For, to authorize um, the repair, um, like inspection of the oil tank by CV Oil, and that had been discussed before. Also, the chimney, uh, the chimney um, repair. Okay. Like to have an estimate done and like a repair the chimney, basically because of the previous leak that we had <laughs> upstairs. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So those two things, please, and. Sure. Uh, and just like um, the email, if you could please uh, also let us know I, uh, about the percentage of the, uh, the how the library is being, okay. you know, the percentage is like how much money and how money goes uh, into the uh, upkeep, upkeep of the library. So we pay ten, like 10,000 a year on the upgrade. That grant that is not the uh, reserve fund, but uh, it's like the I uh, you know the percentage of you know, the percentage of the building fund. I don't think there's a yes. set percentage, I think it's yeah. really more no. um, no. crisis yeah. determined. You know, that's there's not we don't have a set percentage of the um, town building fund, it's it's not enough. It's not enough, no, yeah, so it's basically, I know the fund, but it's like. Uh, uh, the trustees were um, wanting some clarification from the select board of what percentage you feel the town contributes to the t to the library operating budget. Yeah, the budget. It seems yeah. like it I should be a relatively simple division of the total budget to, um, and the town's contribution, but through the winter at building at um, uh, budget finance committee meetings, percentages up to 90% were mentioned of um, what members of the town budget and finance committee and the select board felt that they were paying towards the library bills. Um, so the trustees were looking for a clarification of what the select board felt that percentage was, if it's not a simple division. I don't think that's a, um, 
I don't really remember that ever being discussed in that in those terms. Yeah. Really, because yeah. um, really the, we have no control over how much money the library raises on its own, and so if you attach a percentage of it, it's 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 all over the place. It's it's more of just how much we can how much we can get. So I I, I don't. I don't so, think there is a percentage of the library budget that we have committed to to give. Well, yeah. For instance, for next year, it's 56% of our total budget is the $40,000 we're getting from the town represents 56% okay. of our budget. Right. And whether this select board felt that that was an accurate figure. They were just wanting some clarification on that. If that's what it adds up to be, I guess that's what it accurate <laughs> math is math. That's what I felt, but yeah, we're yeah. looking yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't this talking about ninety percent of the library budget, I don't recollect that ever coming up. But um, Okay. Um, but just to clarify, we do have your permission to go ahead and con contract for uh, replacing the oil tank. And no, it doesn't work without the insurance papers in, in place. Yeah, we. I thought you were asking to having them um, to, to, to authorize oh. the use of the building reserve fund to do those two projects. Oh, we'd like to get a good quotes <laughs> to figure out what we're talking about. Okay, it's, we had submitted those figures back during the budget and finance process. Um, the okay. quote was fourteen hundred dollars from CV Oil mm -hmm. to replace the okay. tank and put it on a even footing, and then an estimate of approximately two thousand um, dollars to do the chimney work. Those were detailed in the letter uh, back last fall that you all got. I believe we did not finalize anyone's requests for use of the building fund. And there was a, um, a lot of discussion about the needs for this particular building. <laughs> the, um, I guess the one thing is the, um, well, all right, it's good that you bring this back to our attention and we'll have to discuss this, but we're not, we're not going to let you go out the door with a blank check right now to go and, and do that stuff, but it's good that you brought it to our Attention. It seems the oil tank is probably a, a high concern because at some point, see, the oil will refuse to right. fill. fill it. Yeah, yeah. Right. we won't so be in the building we're at that point without it. So we're at that point. Sorry, so, no, sorry. So, yeah. so we're um, yeah. 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 yeah, we're already yeah. in our grace period. Yeah. So, yeah. so yes, we're. We'll, you know, definitely probably have to do that. And so you'll give us an answer, right? Like whether when we can contact CB Oil. Well, it can't be done until after July 1. Right, it's we're going to have to be right. after the end of this year into the next budget year. Right. So, so yes, we will. Just to clarify that, is the work cannot be done until July 1st, or the bill will not be paid until July 1st? So work could be done in June to be paid in July, yes or no? Just curious. Well, we're getting pretty close to July. I mean, that the invoice date is. If the invoice date is after the 1st yeah. of July, if you can, you know, have see the oil and drag your feet on invoicing you. But it's, um, I mean, July 1st is, is still pretty far until meeting season. So if you could just, you know, get on their schedule, make sure that we're. Well, that's what I was concerned about yeah. is they could get yeah. very busy this year. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay, do you need anything from us? to move that forward? Uh, no, no, I think you um, Okay, so we'll wait to hear from you. About that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so, sorry for the interruption. Thank you. Good night. Good night. All right, well, where were we? Um, we were in West Hill. No. West Hill, and we pretty much agreed yeah. that we're okay. going to change that and uh, we voted to this. So we're on to the next meeting date. There is in question because it falls on Memorial Day, Memorial Monday. Day, Memorial Day Monday, and um, I'm fine with me. We'll go to that. I'm fine with Memorial Day. Okay, so you're all welcome to. Say 26, 28, 28, 28. 28. 28. 28. All right. Um, and then we have a park use application. Harley, Harley, are you just scratching your head? No, I thought we were winding up. We winding up, or you got? We got one more, a couple, a couple little things. things. 
couple of things. Uh, Ned, um, um, so the um, parents of the graduates um, would like to um, make an application um, to provide a luncheon, reception, and celebration of their accomplishments, um, not serving alcoholic beverages. And a celebration of the class of 2018 for on the park, and I would move to give them permission to do that. I second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And I'm assuming this is on July 30, July 9th, because I didn't hear it. No, it's the date of event graduation. is the 9th, yeah. Yeah, Saturday, July 9th. No, no, June 9th. June 9th. Hello. <laughs> I know what I meant. I just didn't say it right. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've already had literature. Um, and then, yeah. And we also had um, this proposal from Spalding Press to hold us at the same price for the printing of the town reports if we'd commit to three years of doing that. And it's. Um, same or two years rather, and I would um, I'd move that we, we go into that agreement with them. I'll second that. Yeah. Aye. Uh, they do a good job and they yeah. come through when we need them. That's a lock in rate. Yeah. yeah. As long as we don't get this really, really big. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, while we have Orca Media bringing this information to the world, uh, Efficiency Vermont would like to make sure that all business owners have uh, access to a free energy assessments at no cost and no strings attached. Of course, they will offer you um, nicely rated loans to perform the work if you should choose to do so. But um, uh, contact Efficiency Vermont if you're interested in um, getting some uh, evaluation of your property. And yeah, that's free. You that, said. That's mm -hmm. free. The, yeah, consultation. Um, that's you. I oh, that, okay. that goes to Joan. And that was um, Nancy. Is that <coughs> the I hands? just have. I think that the park, uh, the bandstand electrical is mm -hmm. on the. Yeah, agenda. old business. Yeah, uh, old business. Louis is going to try to get with Jerry and go over that. He didn't have time. He's, he's in. But we wanted to get it in. Before July one, yeah. Louis. So we'll bug Louis about that. You hear that, Louis? Are you watching? Once he gets his, once he gets his grain list, I'm not having one. Right, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Louis the Lister. You saw it, right? And um, I think that's that's all. And now Harlan, you have something else that you wanted to um, talk about. Are you going to have like? Uh, uh, public meeting for input on this trail system? Yeah, that was part of the um, what they were talking about, I suppose. I mean, uh, as a select board, for the town to... Yeah, that, yeah. that was, I think okay. they presented that as part of the, uh, well, part of the deal. I'm sure that's on the record. That yeah. Have yeah. And my other question is, what's new in Bingo? What's new in Bingo? I yeah. don't know. Our lawyers are oh, doing their well. lawyer thing. So the school property too. The school property. I was told that the um, they were going to meet with the students and explain the situation and, and ask, Take recommend, and have a vote and to give it to the town. And that's um, I don't know what well, action is taking place. place. Yeah, that was Tony Goopy. That was Tony Goopy is working on that. that. Yeah. So that's um, what's the recommendation? The recommendation is for um, them to. Um, relinquish it to the ownership of the town. Yeah, that's um, what we would like to see happen, and that's what I think is where it's headed. To be caps. Yeah. For its original purpose. Yeah. No, so. no, no. We're gonna we're gonna build low income housing. We're gonna call it. You know. We're gonna call it Harlan Acres. Walter Wells is trying to build one out there. That's why I come to these meetings every Harlan day. We're gonna call it Harlan Acres. <laughs> Just say it. I have a very trivial issue that we could close with. Um, there's a notification from uh, Vermont Leeds, the city and towns, to remind everyone that uh, takes care of property in town. A pesticide is any substance intended to prevent, destroy, repel, or mitigate a pest. 
Um, it includes Roundup, Scott's Weed and Feed, Preen, uh, Decon, and Raid, for example. Um, if a municipal employee or hired contractor is using this or a similar product, he or she is a non-commercial applicator. In Vermont, you must have a license, a Class A or a Class B pesticide license to, to spray the ground. <laughs> so the cemetery should know that they should not be using any pesticides unless they do get that Class A or Class B license to do so or they can ask Dan to do it for them because he is licensed. Not for long. <laughs> I hate that one. I hate that one. Yeah, so we would also want um, our, our uh, lawn, lawnmower people to know as well. A natural player. <laughs> all right, so I guess we're just going to pay some bills and thank you all for coming.